So today we're going to take a quick look at creating Azure Active Directory users and Azure Active Directory groups by using Azure CLI, the Azure PowerShell, and also by using the Azure portal to get that done. Okay, let's take a quick look at the demo here. Um, to start off, we're going to go and create a new user in our environment. So let's drop into Azure Active Directory and let's drop into the users section. I could do this through a number of different portals. I could do this through the Azure Active Directory portal here, or I could do it through something like Microsoft's new Entra portal, or I could even do this through the Office portal itself, which is now called Microsoft 365 portal. So if I create a new user here, uh, we are going to call this user Joseph and with a very quick name of Joseph Price. Uh, I'm going to grab his password. This is an auto-generated password created by uh, Azure or by Azure AD. If I want to log into this account, I'm going to need that password in a moment. That password will change on first logon. Uh, in here, I want to just go and build him though. I don't want to do anything with the user. I could block his sign. I could change his usage location. This usage location is very important for conditional access later on. In the real world, you want to make sure that a real user has a real location. So much so that if you do this through the Microsoft 365 portal, it will actually force you to give a usage location here. So now that user is actually built what we're going to do is we're going to drop back and we're going to go and create a new group now inside these groups if i go and build a new group i have a couple of different options i have a security group or i have a microsoft 365 group if i create a security group this group can be used to well group together users and use that for access control lists within azure itself and also for assigning things like role-based access control if I choose a Microsoft 365 group, on the other hand, I actually get a group email address attached to this that can be used for things like Microsoft Teams. But I'm just going to create a very basic group here called Senior Admins, and we're going to leave this as a membership type of assigned down here. Notice we also have the ability to do dynamic users or dynamic devices. If we selected something like dynamic users, we'll, we would be able to have users automatically added and removed from this group dependent on attributes about that user. So we're going to make an owner of this and we're going to add our new user Joseph Price as an owner of this group so he can add and remove people to this group later on. So that's how you kind of build a very basic group and a very basic user within the portal. But what about if you want to do this through PowerShell? Well, if I pop up a new PowerShell um, administrative window here, and I'm just going to make those fonts ever so slightly bigger so it's a little bit easier to read, especially when you're watching this on YouTube, we're going to install a module called Azure AD here. In fact, there's going to be a number of commands I'm going to run in a moment. Uh, these commands you'll see pop up as we go through. These, some of these things like, for example, installing the module of Azure Active Directory might take a couple of minutes to actually do. Remember, ever since PowerShell version 5.1, PowerShell has been automatically linked in to something called the PS Gallery. This PowerShell Gallery has a number of modules actually loaded on it. So whether you want to do the Azure modules or whether you even want to do something like VMware or you wanted to do something like Citrix, it's all nicely listed up here in this PowerShell gallery. This is what you're actually linking into when you do install module within PowerShell here. It's linking out to the powershellgallery.com. So once the module is installed, that module is downloaded onto this machine and it still needs to be loaded into memory before it can actually be used. If we give this a moment for this untrusted repository to install, we'll get back to the prompt and we'll be able to import this module directly into memory for use. So we'll import the module Azure Active Directory. And what we will do is we will start to create a couple of user accounts here in PowerShell. Now, first of all, we use a dollar password profile as a variable to load in the object of open Azure AD model password profile. This will be used later on in the commands allowing us to actually spec a password for this user account. 
the password during this process has to be stored in a very specific way uh, because it is encrypted when it's passed into Azure. So let's connect our PowerShell shell to Azure Active Directory with the connect Azure ID command, and that's going to bounce us out to our sign in box. We're going to jump back in here with the administrative account. Uh, I could use any account that has the ability to go and create users here, but we're just going to use the admin account for ease of access. We're going to specify the domain name that we're using. In this case, the domain that's coming directly from our Active Directory tenant, our default domain. And we're going to spec up a new user. We'll just use the new Azure ID user command, the display name of Isabel Garcia down here, passing in that password that we used before and passing in the domain name and making sure that the account is actually enabled. Now all PowerShell commands like new dash az user, new dash azure, sorry, ad user, you don't need to remember these commands. They're mostly human readable. I mean, new dash azure ad user, it kind of makes sense as to what it does. But if you jump into the documentation for this piece, there is a lot more information in regards to that specific command and the examples around how to actually use it. PowerShell is not about remembering commands. PowerShell is 99% knowing what you can do, 1% knowing how to actually do it. So for example, get dash Azure ID user down here, we can go and see that that Isabel user account is actually created. And if we pop back into our Contoso and we pop back into users, we should be able to see that Isabel is created. So remember PowerShell is 99% knowing what you can do, 1% about how to actually do it because you have documentation to look stuff up. Um, you're not supposed to remember the commands. Also, how, well, 1% knowing how you can do it. How do you know what is possible? 99.99% .99 of things that are pointy clicky can do be done in typey typey. And if you can do it in typey typey once, you can do it in typey typey 100,000 times just as easily. For example, let's do a new dash Azure AD group down here to go and create a group called um, Junior Admins. And let's go and see the contents of that group. Let's go and have a look at Get AD group and make sure it's actually completed, which it is. We've got senior admins and we've got junior admins, the one that we just built down here. And let's actually now go and add some users to that group. So if we come in here, we'll just get the user, uh, which is actually going to be Isabel that I'm going to grab here. And the group is going to actually be using the object ID based off junior admins, i.e. we're just doing a search here for Jun. We could use the actual full display name of junior admins if we wanted to. And we'll go and add that user, the AD group member with the object ID of group and dollar user. So dollar user is Isabel and dollar group is actually that junior admins group. And we can add one to the other. Now, if we come down here and have a look at get dash AZ group member, we can see that Isabel is a member of that group. Now, if we just jump up here through the GUI, just so we can see that in a slightly easier way, we can see we have junior admins and inside junior admins, if I go to the members of junior admins, you'll notice that I have nothing inside here. Um, if we go and refresh this, hopefully there we go, Isabel Garcia. Rule number one of Azure and rule number one of the cloud. At first, if you don't succeed, refresh, 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 and that will solve 90% of your problems. Don't expect anything in Azure to operate immediately when you click the button. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of a different way of doing this. We're going to actually use the Azure CLI instead of PowerShell to perform the same objects or perform the same kind of operations down here. The Azure CLI can be downloaded in a number of different ways. If we just go and look here for Azure CLI, you will find that you can pull this straight down from learn.microsoft.com here. You can actually download that on Windows, Mac, Linux, or even run it in Docker if that's the way you're so inclined. Azure CLI commands work the same as Azure PowerShell commands, or at least end up producing the same results. 99% of the time, there is a PowerShell commander and Azure CLI way of doing things. Azure CLI is just related more closely to um, bash and more closely to Linux lands. So if you are 
more used to your Hippie open source operating systems rather than using Windows, you can use Azure CLI, it's not a problem. We can use CLI on Windows or we could use CLI in other operating systems. In fact, now that PowerShell is actually open source as well, we could actually go and grab uh, the latest versions of PowerShell and run those on Mac and run those on Linux. But there is always difficulty in trying to get a Linux person to use a Microsoft scripting language even if it is really useful, like PowerShell. So this is currently grabbing that Azure CLI very quickly from the learn.microsoft.com section down here from this ak.ms URL. So we'll just wait for that to download and we'll wait for that to actually install. It shouldn't take all that long to do. Okay, so that Azure CLI is now installed. If I just pop into the Windows terminal, which is a much better solution for interacting with PowerShell shells and for interacting with command prompts, we can see that we now can type AZ and the Azure CLI is actually installed. This Azure CLI has a number of utilities with it and it's a bit like a giant PowerShell module, but more Linuxy. So if we go to AZ login, uh, we will get this Azure CLI actually connected to the um, Azure environment. So we will jump this out here, sign into our specific account. We've now logged into Microsoft Azure and it's connected. You can see that that process looked ever so slightly different to the Azure PowerShell login. Don't ever expect any consistency across Azure. So we'll try and do the same kind of things as we did in PowerShell. We'll do an AZ AD user create. This time we'll do a Dylan Williams and pop his password directly in there. Our result will end up to be the same, but the commands that we've used to get there are slightly different. So if we jump back in here now and we jump back into Contoso and we have a look at users, we should be able to see Dylan Williams is nicely created. If we jump back up here again, and we do AZ AD user list output table, we'll be able to see a list of all of our users inside our environment. I mean, admittedly, we can see it right there as well. Uh, we will use this to also go and create a group down here. So we'll do AZ AD group create. Again, we'll just build one called service desk. We don't need to really remember these commands, but we need to remember that they are actually here. You'll noti also notice that the kind of outputs that you get from the Azure AD commands or the AZ commands, the outputs are all generally in JSON. Try not to get freaked out a bit by the JSON itself. Um, and we can also go and list those groups with an output of table here as well. So we can see that we've actually got that service desk group actually nicely created down here. And if we go back into Contoso and click on groups, we should be able to see that service desk group listed right here. So we're also going to do one final piece of the puzzle here. We're just going to drop into roles of administrators. And we're just going to add some of these users to the Azure DevOps administrator role. So if we come down here and try and find the Azure DevOps administrator role, we can start to add a couple of these users in here. So we could add, for example, Dylan Williams to become an Azure DevOps admin. And we could also add Joseph Price in here to become an Azure DevOps admin as well. And that kind of completes our quick demo for creating users within Azure Active Directory and creating groups within Azure Active Directory. And we also created some users and some groups through Azure CLI and through Azure PowerShell. Thanks for watching.